Design genius or design fail? In today's video, I want to explore the function behind the design of Tesla's new Cybertruck. I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. So it's been just over a week since Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck to the world. And there's been a lot of news attention, there's been a lot of opinions being thrown around the internet about the looks of the Cybertruck. And I want to set that aside just for a minute, and I want to not talk about the actual opinions of the design, but I want to actually want to talk about the function behind the design. It Was this a design genius based on function? One of the first features that I want to discuss the function behind is the stainless steel exterior of the truck. This was definitely a surprise to me. I did not expect a stainless steel truck and I don't think anybody else did as well. But what are some of the benefits of a stainless steel exterior and why is this functionally superior to a traditional painted steel or aluminum design? So when comparing a stainless steel exterior of a vehicle, to a painted steel or painted aluminum that you normally find on trucks or other vehicles, the benefits become clear very quickly. So they are much more dent resistant with stainless steel versus your painted steel or aluminum. It's rust proof. Scratches can easily be buffed out. It's much cheaper to manufacture. And as Elon Musk showed in some video clips, this particular 30X rolled cold stainless steel is actually bulletproof to a 9mm bullet. In order to see how a stainless steel bodied car would live out in real life, I wanted you to hear from Ryan McCaffrey in his podcast, Ride the Lightning, the unofficial Tesla podcast. And he actually owned a DeLorean for 12 years, which has a stainless steel exterior. And in this clip I'm about to play, he talks about why he likes the stainless steel exterior and the benefits of having a stainless steel car. Let me tell you about stainless steel. For those of you who've placed an order for the Cybertruck, um, this, I, 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 I wouldn't be so arrogant as to call myself an expert on many things, if anything, but I will say I'm very, I have 12 plus years of experience owning a stainless steel bodied car. So I have, I have a lot of life experience with this. And let me tell you, if, if you just yeah, if you haven't really thought about this aspect of your Cybertruck yet, you are going, I can almost promise you, you are going to love the fact that your Cybertruck has a naked stainless steel skin. Uh, you don't ever wax it. It's not paint. You don't wax it. You don't need paint correction. You don't need paint protection film. You don't ever need to put ceramic coating on it. It's an owner's dream. The, the stainless steel. It will never rust. It will look as good in 30 years as it does now, even if it's been left outside. Scratches, should it scratch, can be taken out of the, of the body with heavy-duty Scotch-Brite pads. The next feature that I want to discuss is the exoskeleton of the truck, or as you could point out, this is a unibody design. So a traditional truck is made with a body-on frame design. So in this this particular section I want to compare a body on frame design which is what traditional trucks are made out of to a unibody design which is what most cars and smaller SUVs are made from. Now the reason most trucks the Ford F150, the Dodge Ram, the Silverado, the GMC Sierra, the reason these trucks are made with a body on frame design is because it generally has better characteristics for a truck. So for instance, a body on frame design allows for a higher ground clearance. It allows for more flex for extreme off-road conditions. And the heavy duty frame that the body truck body sits on allows for increased towing capacity and payload capacity. So these are some of the important reasons why most trucks are made with a body on frame design. 
Now a standard vehicle, a car or a small SUV with a unibody design, so instead of having a body on a frame, the frame and the body are all just one piece, all one unified piece, unibody. And the reason this is not generally used for trucks is because it doesn't allow for as high a ground clearance usually. It also usually has lower tow and payload capacities. An example of a truck made with a unibody design would be a Honda Ridgeline. That pickup truck does not have very good towing capacity, only up to 5,000 pounds, whereas a truck that is going to be pulling trailers, etc., needs more than that. So just in general, this is why companies don't build trucks with a unibody design. But Tesla has a unibody design with what they're calling their exoskeleton. And how do they accommodate for this? How are they able to get Tesla's Cybertruck to have great stats and great towing capacities with a unibody design? One of the big benefits of an electric car, or in this case, an electric truck, is that you don't have the exhaust or the drive shafts and other components underneath of the vehicle, which take away from the actual ground clearance of a truck. If you were to take a gas or diesel truck and remove the drive shafts and the exhaust, you would have, of course, increased the ground clearance substantially. With a Tesla pickup truck, you don't have any of that. Of course, it's built on that flat skateboard design. This allows for Tesla to take a unibody design and with their adaptive air suspension, they are able to have up to a 16 inch ground clearance. And another interesting thing about this adaptive air suspension is it allows for a four inch adjustment in either direction for your ride height. So if you're going down the highway, you can lower your truck for increased efficiency or if you're doing off-roading, you can raise it up to have the max ground clearance of 16 inches. So if you're comparing how this 16-inch ground clearance compares to the competition, I thought it best to start with the very best, and that would be the Ford F-150 Raptor. That's, of course, their off-road um, kind of sports truck, and that has the highest clearance of any gas pickup truck that I could find at 11.5 inches, which is you know, very respectable and very good. The Dodge Ram 1500 has a ground clearance of 10.3 inches, and the Chevy Silverado has a ground clearance of 8.8 .8 inches. So you'll see there that it is four and a half inches higher than the Ford F-150 Raptor, which is a very good off-roading truck. Another downside usually that you have with a unibody design is that you, you are not able to tow or carry as much in your payload capacities because it doesn't have that really strong frame underneath the body. But in the case of the Tesla pickup truck, they, they're using a different material than most trucks. So most trucks or cars are going to use traditional steel or aluminum to make their bodies. And so if you were to look at maybe a Honda Ridgeline, it's not going to have a stainless steel body. And as Elon Musk mentioned in a tweet when he was talking about the uh, stainless steel used for the truck, this is the same stainless steel that they're using on the Starship. And he mentioned that their 30X cold rolled stainless steel was stronger than titanium, which is why they decided to use it for the Starship and, of course, for the Tesla pickup truck. So this really strong material, this cold rolled stainless steel, allows a unibody frame to bear much more weight than a traditional unibody design. So in comparison, the Ford F-150 can tow 11,100 pounds. It has a payload of 3,270 pounds. The Dodge Ram 1500 can tow 12,750 pounds. It has a payload of 2,300 pounds. The Chevy Silverado can tow 13,400 pounds, has a payload of 2,250 pounds, but those are all a body on frame design, which has a lot of benefits in those particular regards. Tesla has changed the game a little bit with a unibody design that can tow 14,000 pounds at the top spec, and all three specs can take a payload of 3,500 pounds. And so this is all done once again, this function of this unibody, this stainless steel 
unibody or exoskeleton allows it to bear much more weight and compete and in this case actually beat the competition. The next feature that I want to talk about is the planar design. By planar I'm simply just talking about it has a lot of flat angles and not curvatures like a traditionally designed truck or a traditionally designed car. But what are the benefits of this planar design? One of the first benefits of this design is a more simplified manufacturing process which leads to a less expensive product. The second benefit of this design is that ironically it appears to have improved aerodynamics compared to other trucks on the market. And the third benefit I think of this design is that it actually differentiates itself from the loyal pickup truck market that exists today. So first of all, it's lower manufacturing cost. Elon Musk had something to say about this in a response to CyberGrade on Twitter in, on November 24th, and he said, new manufacturing methods are certainly needed, but then I'm confident it'll actually cost less because of its simplicity and lower part count. So I think the two keys there are that it is simple, it's simplicity, and it's lower part count. There are a lot lower manufacturing costs for this design. This allows for a much smaller manufacturing footprint. You don't need a paint shop. You don't need the large stamping machines. You don't need the expensive tooling. Now, as I mentioned, this design actually appears to have some aerodynamic benefits. When we're talking about the coefficient of drag or the drag coefficient, the lower the number, the more aerodynamic a vehicle is. And so the most aerodynamic pickup truck on the market right now is the 2019 Ram 1500. That has a drag coefficient of 0.357. It's hard to find any kind of actually published numbers for anything other than the Dodge Ram, but they do claim that that is the lowest of all pickup trucks on the market. So we can assume that the Ford F-150 is at least 0.36, 0.37 or so, and the Silverado somewhere around there as well. So 0.357 for a pickup truck is actually pretty impressive, and Dodge Ram has put some good technology into that. But interestingly enough, Tesla has posted that the Tesla Semi, the huge vehicle that that is, will have a drag coefficient of 0.3. Six. And they're able to do that with a huge semi. So the question is, what can they do with the Tesla Cybertruck? Were they thinking about aerodynamics when they designed the Tesla Cybertruck? And while Tesla has not officially released the coefficient of drag or the aerodynamic qualities of this truck, there was a gentleman, Justin W. Martin 14, on Instagram, and he did post his findings. And he spent time actually running the Tesla Cybertruck through the software, and he came up with the analysis here that I'm going to read from this post. And so he said in his words, well, no one else did it, so I did. Here is the Cybertruck in CFD, which CFD stands for the Computational Fluid Dynamics. It's how we measure the coefficient of drag. And he said again, what intrigues me is how well this works. While it may occur to be happenstance, that the arrow turns out to be quite well, I believe this was actually the result of a very clever design. Ease of manufacturing in flat panels, significant use of triangular body parts, etc. I won't quote a drag coefficient, as I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but I will place money on it being much lower than most sports cars due to downforce and nearly any one-half ton truck, period. Further, I believe the vortex shed over the bed walls helps to act at, to seal the bed when the cover is open. I haven't modeled the open bed yet, but it sure seems promising. Further, it appears that the front end is designed to almost entirely blank out and shield the wheel well. The CAD file is dimensionally correct. All angles and curves are as close as possible. There are some uncertainties such as fenders and wheel well air exhaust, etc. And so I thought this was really interesting that he ran this through and he was able to find some data pointing to the fact that it is apparently very aerodynamic and should have a lower coefficient of drag than many other cars in the market and any other truck on the market as well. 
The final design feature that I want to discuss the function behind is the simplistic interior. So when looking at the interior, you'll, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the Model 3 with just a slightly larger screen. Now, why did Tesla go with a simple interior? I think the first reason, and the same, this is probably the same reason why they did it in the Model 3, is because a simple interior is super easy to manufacture. There are considerably less parts, and it definitely takes a lot less man hours to put this car together. Also, the simplistic interior is a modern design that is self-driving ready. So when Tesla releases their full self-driving software and it's ready, it's feature complete, and the government approves it, and you can fall asleep in your car and it will drive you to your destination, this vehicle will be ready for that. Cars with all the knobs and buttons and all the different things will start to look outdated very quickly and be unnecessary, but this car will be ready for that. Well, thank you so much for watching that. In my opinion, this Tesla truck is a design genius. Whether you like the physical looks of it or not, from a technical perspective, it has a lot of benefits. I think it will sell well, and I'm excited to actually see these on the road in a couple years. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell icon, you'll know when new videos are released every week. Once again, thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day.